Huzzah, Rangers! This is Phil Harris here at the Jacks Rangers Show. I am joined with Diamond Dave McVeigh. Double D, how are you? I am pretty good, Phil. How are you doing? Uh, hanging in there, pal. Hanging in there for sure. Um, it is LA week. Big rivalry week. We've never played this team before in this particular art car, um, incarnation. But Boston, New England versus LA is a storied professional sports rivalry i love it i hate la there's just <laughs> something about i've been out there it's 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 fine you know it's it's nice i guess but it's just a, it's a different mindset here it's a different culture yeah. um and it's at odds with those folks down there in socal it really for me it's i, I won't claim to have spent a ton of time in southern california but i have been to la and san diego Sure. And which I feel is like what you have to have at least done to say you've been to Southern California. Sure. And very different cities. Uh, and LA is the epitome of like nice place to visit. Like yeah. I enjoyed many things I did while I was there. I was like, right. this is an interesting place. Wouldn't want to live there. Would Same. never, Same. would never choose to move out to LA. I don't think. Right. Um, I feel the same way about that. You know, uh, as I said, it's a storied uh, rivalry in sports. And it's great that this franchise is back. Hopefully we'll get the New York franchise back so we can also gain that other amazing sports rivalry for yeah. professional sports. But I wanted to mention really quickly, this and every single episode is sponsored by our good friends at Inkify. Custom printing and embroidery since 2010, Inkify provides high-quality decorated apparel nationwide. From ordering the apparel to printing, adding a private label, folding, bagging, and fulfillment, they handle it all so you don't have to. Head over to Inkify.com and get started on your order. Tell them TJRS sent you. Let Carlos know TJRS sent you, and you'll get 15% off of your entire order. That is a hell of a deal. And I wanted to quickly mention as well the watch along that is taking place at Bozo's Granite Bunker. We'll be live at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Sunday as our New England Free Jacks will be looking to soften the LA dickheads. You never know who will be jumping on the stream with us. So make sure you're tuned in to the best MLR fan commentary in the entire league only on TJRS. And there are going to be plenty dick puns in this particular episode. We're certainly <laughs> not above that. We have our prepared pun segment. I didn't prepare for the prepared pun segment. I've got a couple that I'm going to be uh, throwing at folks here. I yeah. propose we just call them Clarf. We rearrange the letters, Clarf. you know, Club Los Angeles Rugby Football. Rolls off the tongue. Clarf. Sure. Yeah. So we're going to go out to play Clarf. Yep, Clarf. That sounds like something that you're doing if you're drunk in college right. and you've had a couple too many um, uh, wine uh, coolers. Clark. Right. Uh, we could have gone with flark that's flark. also an also an option might it may be superior i don't know yeah. uh yeah should be a fun match this weekend there are some really there, there are good lists of players to keep an eye on for like different reasons uh you know i always like to approach a match from like a standpoint of who is cool on the other team you know who are players sure. i find uh I find fun to watch or who I'm interested in uh, how their career is progressing. So mm -hmm. I think it should be fun. I agree about getting LA back in the rivalry. Boston LA is legendary. It's one yes, of it those kind of automatic rivalries when you have a team in both cities. Uh, it's kind of similar to Boston and New York. Mm -hmm. um, so great to have them back. I hope it's a, it's a heated affair and, and I hope fans are excited for it. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where I wanted to quickly take a look at the standings. The Beast of the East, your new, mighty New England Free Jacks, remain in first place in the Eastern Conference, 24 table points with a point differential of 69. Nice. The <laughs> LA Dickheads find themselves in dead last in the West with 11 total table points and a point differential of minus 46. That's not very good. It's not great. Um, L.A. have only beaten Utah, which is hilarious to me, uh, and lost to Dallas, Seattle, Houston, San Diego, Chicago, and Ty D.C. Man, D.C. sucks. Uh, there are two former Free Jacks on the awfully named Rugby Football Club Los Angeles. That's a mouthful. 
Uh, prop Connor Young and Locke Regan O'Gorman, both Canadian internationals, were on the championship winning squad of the Jacks last season. New franchises in this league take their licks and generally don't make a lot of waves in their first season. And LA has been no exception to this. They played some teams close. They tied BC. It's, it's mind boggling to me that BC in week two came into Fort Quincy and beat us. And they, they have just fallen off of the map since then. Uh, I hate them so much. Uh, they have some pretty good players, but should be no match for the Beast of the East. But then again, it's a hellacious road trip, number one, yep. for the Jacks. And every team plays like they're in a final, number two, against the defending champs. Dave, will the dickheads rise to the occasion, or will the Free Jacks cause L.A. to go flaccid in SoCal? <laughs> I'm going to be flopping around in uh, yeah. Southern California, I think. Yes, sir. Uh I don't. I hope that LA will not be able to stand up to the the more complete kind of game, and especially the pace of attack that um, New England will be able to bring. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping to see those two free jacks in the lineup. Connor Young uh, is uh, actually been playing pretty well for them. Um, he's kind of putting his hand up a little bit, uh, so that should be exciting. Um, and I really want to see Simi Kunitani. Okay. So he is their six. He is a Fijian gold medal winner uh, at the yes. Olympics yep. for sevens. Um, he's one of the guys who came over to them from the Tel Aviv Heat. Okay. Yep. Um, but he has experience in several teams in the top 14 and the premiership. Um, he played on the seventh circuit for uh, a good long while. Mm-hmm. Um and he is, I propose a name change from the Los Angeles rug football rugby club, Clarf, from Clarf. Clarf, Or yeah. they can keep Clarf if they really need They have no mascot. And sure. I say they just become the Los Angeles Kunitanis because okay. he's a little bit of their whole team. Um, not, you know, not really I'm overstating myself a, a bit, but... He is their top running meter. Yeah, like looking at their match against Chicago last week. Yeah. Top running meters, Semi Kunitani. Okay. Ball carries, Semi Kunitani. Tackles, Semi Kunitani. Uh, score to try. He's pretty damn unstoppable. He's a big unit. He's a six. But remember, this guy is an international sevens player. Right. You know, he he has the mobility of a oh I don't know a gold medal winning Olympian it's in sevens, yeah. right? But he is an absolute hit stick as well. Love he that. is very difficult to tackle, um, especially with a little bit of a run up. You know, he's one of those guys who he is going to get a few meters after contact. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see him driven back, um, at least not often. Yeah, you know, I hope our guys make it a point to, right? I, I hope we do see it. Uh, sure. But he is somebody who is a he is a tackling challenge uh for other teams and he'll also knock the shit out of you if you <laughs> give him an opportunity to just drill you like a missile. Love that. Um Jason Dom, who's been playing eight oh, for yes. him. He missed most yeah. of last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the guys who came over from Atlanta. That's right. And um, he's just been a – he's a really solid eight. He He's Good savvy. Player, yeah. He's big. He's very tall. He's 6'4". Um, and he's just – he makes good choices. I know he went to Clem Sucks, so – yeah. You know, a, a nemesis of yours. Absolutely. Uh, just based on those grounds alone. And he lived in Atlanta, at least for an amount of time, which, again, makes him a nemesis. Oh, 100%. Yeah. But uh, a great player. Yeah, he is. He's one of those is, annoyingly good players. Yeah. He is a great player. He often looks like he stepped out of the 80s as well with sure. like a, yep. <coughs> excuse me, a, little, a weird haircut and like a mustache. And you're like, yes. All right, buddy. You you rock. We're cut from the same the cloth, one. me and that guy. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so he's another, and then Matt Antisev, he is the guy. He actually New England Independence product. Oh wow! Uh, went played at Dartmouth, um, and he got his first start at ten for them last week hmm. against Chicago. How about that? So he has been working his way in as one of their developing players. Um, exciting to see. Uh, he's to he's see from Staten Island. You know, he's an American guy. Anytime we see an American ten. Stepping into that jersey, it, mm-hmm. you know, it means good things just in terms of 
uh, player pathways are working. We're we're starting to produce uh, players who have the caliber to play. That's right. You know, wearing that that very important jersey at the MLR level. So really cool. Hopefully we see him start again this week, and then hopefully Jason Patro sits him on his ass a couple times. That'd be great. I feel like TK was trying to pick this guy up as a homegrown player for the Free Jacks, and then if you uh, recall, like they couldn't get the paperwork over the line or something like that because of the yeah. final last year. I think this is the same player. So, yeah, that's interesting to note. I wonder if he'll be starting against the Free Jacks, and if he has a great game, we'll be like, oh, this could have been our guy. You know? <laughs> could have been ours. Could have been ours. Could have so, been ours. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my that's my list. Those are my boys. That's who I'm keeping an eye on okay. uh, in this game. Yeah, man. Uh, let's move over to key to the game real quick. I'll go first. Uh, clinical finishing, when you have the opportunity on the road to take points, take them. Um, once we get the lead... And we will put the foot on the gas and don't give the dickheads any inches. Uh, (laughs) We need to be clinical and execute. Last week, we didn't have that polished execution in many ways, and it burned us. Uh, So we made too many mistakes, and we can't let that happen this week. Like I said, you know, especially if you've got the lead, just take the points. Like, I I, I have always rolled my eyes when I see us taking a, a three points, especially at home. But in a situation like this, you're on the road, you're 3,000 miles away from Fort Quincy, you've just lost a game. By the way, Scott Matthew, I'm giving away some information from my prediction, which I hate to do, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Scott Matthew has never lost two games in a row as Free Jacks head coach. <laughs> so I feel good about that. But, you know, yeah. take the points, you know, uh, take the three points, baby. You know, let, let's let's not, let's take tick, keep the ticking over, keep it ticking over, make it seem impossible for them to come back into the game. Um, because I believe they, they had a late charge against Chicago last week. We don't want to see that happen this week. Yeah. And the Free Jacks, we know, unfortunately, this season, they can kind of, I don't want to say fall asleep, but lose a little bit of sharpness towards the end and let teams creep back in that have no business doing that um, and making it a little bit more of a squeaky bum time. Let's avoid that with clinical finishing. What you got for key to the game? Yeah, I have um, some advice. If you remember interviewing Tom Barrio, the referee, of course, uh, I could. I'll never forget a, that. A fun, fun interview, right? He's a he's a fun guy to chat with, and totally. his he gives the same advice to referees before a big match or your first match or, you know, any match really. The really fitting advice that I think fits here pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the key. Um, we, we shot ourselves in the foot a lot last week with some, totally. some penalties and, and some poor execution and just straight up, you know, things like knocks, just mistakes. Yeah. Um, and this is, this is a match that, uh, you know, we're, we're swinging from the, the top of the table to the bottom of the table. It's a big, it's a big swing It is, and uh, we need to make sure we don't like miss a step on the stairs. Right. We don't, we don't kind of just come in off timing what we really need to do is just get in there and don't fuck it up. Let's follow the game plan. Let's I execute throughout. Um, if we do that, we're going to come out on top. I'm pretty confident in our uh, our chances against Clarf. One of my favorite key to the games that you've ever provided, to be honest with you. That That's perfect. Especially coming off of a loss at home. Don't fuck it up. Love that. Um, listen. As I said previously, it's a tough road trip to the West Coast, but but Scott Matthew, once again, let me emphasize this, Scott Matthew has never lost two in a row as the head coach of the New England Free Jacks. And I'm leading into my prediction right now. If you look, you know, we look, if we look more polished than last week, the Jacks will be taking out a lot of frustration on our new West Coast rivals. New England gets up early and stays on top. My prediction is LA 17, New England 40. What you got? Um, I went for a kind of karmic scoreline. I just flipped last week's scoreline. I'd be very okay. happy. I'd be very happy with that sort of result. Let's let's let that be kind of a low point. Let's mm. just we don't need to win by twenty. I that'd be fine with me. I wouldn't complain. Mm-hmm. Let's like win by eight. Let's win by two okay. scores. You know, let's. let's so just twenty-one make it to convincing. twenty-nine. New England twenty-one winning. twenty-nine. Free Jacks. Yeah. Excellent. Love that. Any closing thoughts for the um, LA preview? Um, no, I think you put it right that hopefully they'll be taking out some frustrations. I think mm. it will. It, it has the potential to be a little bit of a statement game. 
um, my my prediction might be a little conservative in if, in the end because we know that if when these guys are clicking, uh, they can really do a number on somebody. Hell yeah! So um, yeah, I'd I'd love to be wrong in that direction in my in my prediction. I and I recognize the potential, but I don't want to be greedy. I'm I want to keep my head you know firmly attached and just say let's come out ahead. And if you know if the guys want to put on a show, go ahead, put on a show. I think they will. I think we will see an excellent, easy win by the Free Jacks. But who knows? Who knows? Um, I wanted to throw. I I, I didn't see this comment earlier because I normally have my little show notes in front mm. of like other things. But this is a ten out of ten comment from Ranger Chris. Every American is a ten just by having been born <laughs> in the U.S. of A. Uh, fantastic comment. Love that so much. Um, with that being said, we've got one word to exit the video in three, two. One huzzah! huzzah.